So in all these cases, we have done again interesting cases of regular annuity, wherein you pay the annuity amount at the end of every period. Suppose you're paying at the end of one year or in some cases, we did cases when you make the payment <clears throat> even at the end of one month or every month you pay. So hence, accordingly, the interest, the amount on which interest is calculated also changes accordingly. But there are also cases wherein you pay the first installment on the day the loan is sanctioned, which means you're paying an advance annuity. In that case, how does the whole situation change accordingly? That's what we would see in advance annuity. Now, in an advance annuity, you have the question of zero. So, first zero year, you have the zero period, first period, second period, third period, fourth period, and so on and so forth. So, here you pay the first installment, say maybe 10,000 in the beginning itself. And suppose you need to pay 5 installment, then you pay 10,000 for the second year, then again 10,000 at the end in the beginning of the, for the big zero period, the beginning of the first year, beginning of the second year, beginning of the third year, and beginning of the fourth year. So, zero year, one year beginning, and Two second year beginning, third year beginning, four. So you made one, two, three, four, five installment. And you have paid this amount. So, but you're taking it out only at the end of five. So that means there is no further amount that is destructed that is found out over here or which you are deposited over here. But hence you're just going to get an interest for this. So what do we do? We calculate how will it this one in interest would be calculated? How? For this, it will be calculated. Hence, what we can do is, we on this, some interest will be calculated for 5 years. On this, interest would be calculated. This would be calculated. This would be calculated. So, hence, you will have to calculate this for 5 years. And, and you will have to, hence, calculate in the beginning of the 4th year. And you are calculated. And hence, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, now, so at the end of the fourth period, that is in the beginning of the fifth period, there is no deposit. So what you have to calculate is that you are calculating, you are paying this amount on this, it is going to accrue some interest. Okay. So hence you are paying in the beginning of the year. So accordingly, the number of years would change, the annuity period would change and hence how we go about doing this. This is in case of future value, present value would also change accordingly. Let's take up in more detail. So, you have for example here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, you have 5 periods over here just as we did earlier. So, you will make a payment here. So, you will make a, in the previous one regular payment you used to make here, here. So, at the end of first year you used to make, at the end of second year, at the end of third year, at the end of fourth year and at the end of fifth year. Here how you would do, you would do at the beginning of the first year. Then at the beginning of the second year, beginning of the third year, which is the end of the second year, beginning of the fourth year and beginning of the fifth year and hence you don't pay over here. So in that case, what will happen? You will find this is going to incur interest, no doubt for one, you are paid this much, you are going to pay your this much when you collect it at this end is going to in, in, can get interest for one, two, three, four and this amount also. Then this one in for one year less, this is for one year less, this is for one year less and accordingly. In that case, what you will have to do is that you will you will find that this one you are not further deposited anything, but it will gain interest. So what you have to do is that you have to calculate the amount for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 it looks as if you can calculate as if you're paying at the end of the fifth year. So A for 6 you will have to find. That is A for 5 plus 1 you calculate. And from that, if you subtract the last installment, if you subtract the last installment for this, you will end up getting 
the actual valued amount for five years advance. So you calculate for six periods, one, two, three, four, five. You calculate for one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and you calculate for one more period here beyond this, sorry. And beyond this, you need to calculate. And then from that, you subtract the last installment R and you will get the amount that you need to get. So you get for the first period, you hear, here you get, here you get, here you get, here you get. And here also you calculate it, but you want to find only till here. So you find the amount at the end of six periods. From that, you subtract the last installment and you will get it for the five for advance. So always you will get it that way. Much the same way for present value, what you need to do, the present value concept would be this way. Suppose the first installment is paid at the beginning of a period. So this will not incur any interest. And this would incre so this one's value is going to be R upon 1 plus I. The third installment's value will be R upon 1 plus I square. Fourth one would be R upon 1 plus I cube. And the fifth one would be R upon 1 plus I raised to 4. Hence, the present value in this case you are going to do is you are going to find for n minus 1. And then that will give you for this much. And then you add R. So, suppose you want to find the present value for 5 installments. Then find the present value for 4 installments. And add that single first installment on which there is no in, uh, interest that is going to be recurring. Hence, the present value will be the R itself because you are depositing R at the beginning of the period. Hence, accordingly, you find the present value for one installment less, sum of one installment less equivalent. And to that, you add the first installment will give you the net present value, Pn. So, this is the principle that we are going to use in this case. This is a concept of advance annuity. So, if we go through this formula again, you have A that is whatever is the AN I would say. A, AN would be, so suppose you want to find advanced annuity <coughs> for 5 periods. So, then it is going to be, you have to calculate for 6 periods minus R and hence accordingly we will calculate this. Right. Okay. So, this is R by I into 1 minus I. Here also you calculate for, for in case of present value, you have to calculate for one period less. Suppose you want to find for 5, you want to find the uh, present value for 5 installments. First find for 4, uh, four installments the, along with the interest and just add the first installment. That will give you the present value. So, based on this, let us take up 